what we're looking at today is what's called equity and efficiency of the free market. And um, I've subtitled this as the cost of making things fair. If you have a fair society, you, you don't get that fairness for free. It costs something. And uh, it costs in terms of a loss of efficiency. That is that you produce less goods and services the more fairness you have. Well, at least that's the economic theory. Let's have a look at income and wealth. These are two terms that you need to be aware of just to start with. And income refers to um, a flow of, essentially a flow of money over time towards a person. Uh, whereas, um, well, and examples of that include dividends, interest, wages, and so on. Whereas wealth refers to assets. And uh, these include things like um, cars, houses, savings, and shares. Now, it's true that some assets produce income, but not all. For example, a car doesn't. So there is, uh, you can have a contrast between income and wealth, uh, but they are related to each other. Okay, so let's just have a look at some examples. An individual um, usually has differences in income and wealth, and some combinations include low and high wealth, low income, high wealth, uh, low wealth, high income, or it could be even be high income, high wealth, low income, low wealth. There are various combinations that we think of, uh, and it's important to know and be able to classify the differences. So here's a task that you can think of. Uh, um, someone you know, a parent or caregiver. So uh, I'll be thinking of someone that's uh, significantly older than me and is retired. And typically, they are asset rich, but they tend to be income poor, don't have a, a lot of um, free income. They've got the superannuation and maybe a little bit of investment income coming off that. So uh, that's one example. Another example is um, your own situation, or, or my situation, which is similar to that, but your situation, probably you're a student and you've got low income and low wealth. So th there are these contrasts uh, that you can make with other people and it's quite a useful exercise to sort of compare and contrast. Compare means and contrast means saying, well, one person has a high income, the other person has a low income. One person has that high income because they're older and are saved and the other has low income because they've never had the chance to save and get that well high paying job. So. Let's move to equity and equality. Now, equity and equality are two important terms in economics. Equity refers to fairness, whereas equality is more mathematical and refers to equalness. In fact, you could use the equal sign for equality. One of those two terms is very measurable. We know if things are equal, but we don't really know if they're fair. So. Let's have a look at some situations and say, are they fair or unfair? And um, here, that's me. I'm a, I'm a short person, 168 centimetres tall, whereas most of my male students are in the sort of 170 to 180 range, much taller than me and, and much younger. So it, it's, uh, I find that quite difficult. So the question is, is that equal? And the answer is, no, it's not. They're taller than me. Is it fair? Is it equitable? Uh, well, that's a different situation. Here's another example. Your teacher earns in a mo more than a voluntary unemployed worker. Is that equity? No, it's not. Is it, uh, or I should, I should have said, is that equality? No, it's not. Is it fair? Is it equity? Well, probably is fair, but again, it's a matter of opinion. And the voluntary unemployed worker might say, well, it's not fair because I'm young and I should have the money now to enjoy when I'm young. So, so it's an opinion idea. Free markets tend to create bigger ranges of income and wealth than mixed economies, that is, those with higher taxes, lots of government in involvement, transfer payments, things like that. So bigger income ranges, uh, but you tend to have lower... Um, efficiency in the marketplace, that is less goods and services produced overall. Well, that's what the theory says anyway. So some people think it's good and others think it is not. So here's a free market question that you might want to, that sort of highlights these two issues. 
um, is it equitable or fair to have wide ranges of income and wealth in society because the poor are just lazy? So if you think it is fair, you probably agree with that statement. And if you think it's unfair or inequitable, you would say, well, no, it's not their fault. It's not because they're lazy. It's actually just unfair because they can't get work and jobs. So that's the kind of argument you need to put together or think about when dealing with this. So 